All right, let me back up. Can you, are you in? Yeah. Hey everyone, my name's Robert Levis. I'm Jeremiah Levis. Talking to them, not me. Different on this one, you're gonna look right there. See everybody? They're right there. Uh, it is Sunday and we actually recorded this earlier this morning uh, before services. And uh, in all honesty, it didn't work out very well. So we're re-recording and the light is really bad. So we're gonna change, bud. Everyone say hi. Oh. oh, there we go. Can you see? There it is. Somewhat better. Your glasses are probably going to tint out. I have to put mine on because the sun's right there. We are talking in the book of, you're like, you're in my spot, big man. No, you got to be in the camera. We're talking through the book of Matthew and and we wanted to share this with you because we were talking about this and it's kind of been our discussion today, right? Yeah. It's been our discussion about uh, the Beatitudes. Well, I shared earlier, again, a lot of these questions are going to be repeats for him. And I'm like in a shade, but that's okay. What I want you to understand is this, the Beatitudes or blessings. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jeremiah, what does blessing mean? Do you remember what we talked about? What does it mean, blessing? What other word could we use beside blessing? Blessed. Do you remember? No. Talked about it this morning. Remember, it's the B attitudes. The B attitudes. The what or the bless, attitudes. Or the the happy attitudes. Happy attitudes. So it's happy attitudes. And so when we're looking in the Bible and we read it, which we encourage, I encourage, I mean, get in your word daily. Get into God's word. This is that. Remember what we call this? Thing. What is it? It's a certain kind of letter. A love letter. A love us, letter, yeah. right? It's a, it's a, an encouragement letter. Jeremiah got a letter from one of his teachers. Which teacher was it? Mrs. Ramsey. Mrs. Ramsey. Mrs. Ramsey wrote you a letter. And you just read like the first word and the second word and the last word, right? No, I read it all. Hey, why? Because Mrs. Ramsey never sends me letters ever. <laughs> first, okay. We okay, never say okay. So, but it was a special letter to you. Yeah. Right? And that's the idea is this letter, this love letter is written to you. And, and remember what we talked about, and we've talked about it here, is that there was a period of silence, at least what we see in scripture. There was about a 400 year silence from Malachi to Matthew. And so for 400 years, God was silent, or at least what we see. And in this linchpin letter of Matthew, there's a linchpin verse, at least in this sermon. And I want to read to you that sermon. I'll read it to you and you tell me what you hear in this. This is Matthew chapter 5. I've read it and saw, showed it to you yesterday. But it's Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, and it says this. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses, now a big word right there, surpasses means greater than, right? Surpasses in the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So now we talk about Pharisees as kind of understand some of their struggles, but what do you, what do you think of Jeremiah when you think of a Pharisee or a teacher of the law in, in, in a positive aspect? What, what, what kind of person is that, that, that the religious would look at, that they would? They were smart. They knew the Bible and they knew what they should do. Yeah. I guess they just didn't put it into practice. Well, and, and maybe they put it into practice by action, but maybe the heart always wasn't intent. Yeah. Uh, so, again, we were in Bible class today, and Randy, one of the elders at the Salina Church of Christ, he was teaching a class, and we're talking about uh, tradition or ritual. And there's, not, there's nothing wrong in a tradition and or a ritual. The problem is when the ritual becomes your religion. Right, and, and that's where the Pharisees had gotten to the point. They, their their rituals became their religion. Yeah. So same thing like with you. Uh, the, we encourage you to uh, read your Bible, but do I like? Is it a, is it a ritual where I got to force you to do it? No. You know, it's your freedom and choice to do. Well, that, same thing to this context is is you have that relationship with God, the encouragement to read into it, but God loves you despite of it. Now, for them, they're looking at it and what he's trying to point out, because through all these, lots of like laws. Now, there's there's grace written all through it, but you got to really understand what you're reading, I believe, but. Matthew is writing through the inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Look, there's, you can't work it. What did you have to have a? Do you have a, a, a work or a list of what has to happen to be my son? No. 
No? Is there is there is there an oath you have to take? No. You just are, aren't you? Yeah. So, do, 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 do you sometimes make mistakes as a son? A lot of times, yeah. Did, did you ever lose your sonship? No. Because you're my son. Now, the choice is, at 18, you could say, Dad, I don't want to listen to you anymore. But even at 18, you know, we're ta you're talking about today, what we're talking about, savings and stuff like that. And, but the idea is you get to choose this. Now, the sonship, that's given to you. You're my son. Now, the choice now is for you to live in that. And do you live in the understanding of that position? So we go over to grandma. I, you see me going over to grandma and grandpa's house, right? Yeah. Do, when I go to grandma and grandpa's house, uh, do, do I, I don't even knock. Right? Why don't I knock? Because they're your parents. They're my family. It's my home, right? Yeah. Do you knock when you enter in your house? No. You just get to live in the understanding of who you are. That then creates the act a little differently. So they do start seeing these beatitudes, these happy attitudes manifest. So let's walk these attitudes. Now we only have a few minutes, so I'm going to walk this new one. And let me show you here. This picks up. You want to read that for me, bud? All right, so this is verse 5 of chapter 5. And read verse 5 of chapter 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Okay, so blessed are the meek. So we've looked at blessed are the poor in spirit. It's a positional thing. Understanding who you are and who we are helps us understand that because it's God, not me, there's a bit of mourning in that process. Because the next one is uh, the poor in spirit. You understand, compared to God, I'm poor in spirit. My positional issue is I am not the center of the world, right? Yeah. Is that hard to think that way? That I mean, do we, we live our life thinking about the way we like it. Yeah. Right? We just we were just heading out to where? Where are we going to be going? Where, where would we be right now? Florida. Florida. Warm Florida. Was it hard? It was hard for me not to kind of think about yourself and go, man, I really want to be in Florida, not sitting at an airport or not snowing or not icy. Or Was that hard? Yeah. It's hard, right? It's a context. But the positional state, you had asked me that question. Remember the question? What was the question you asked me? And I think it was in the car about about the fact that our trip got canceled. Why God didn't want us to go? Oh yeah, why God? What's another way to think that? That maybe not didn't want us to go. What's another way to think? What's another thing God's doing in that? Why God had a different plan? Yeah, and the fact that God had a different plan. What did we do Saturday instead of sitting on the beach? What did we do? We... We do it at nine o'clock every Saturday morning. We had a Bible study. We got to a Bible study. We had two two people come visit for the first time, right? Yeah. Would we have been there if we were in Florida? No. We wouldn't be able to, to study with them, would they? We would not be no. able to study with them. But it's understanding that position that God says to you, I want to do great things in you, Jeremiah and Robert and, and you guys. And so that's what's going on. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Because of that, there is some mourning because it wasn't the way you had planned. But when you really positionally set yourself in God's pattern, we talked about that word meek. It's the title of this lesson is going to be power under control. So walk me through meekness. You've got, you've got a minute here. Walk me through meekness. What does that look like to you, meekness? Jesus was meek. He had power. He, he could have He could have schooled the Pharisees. He could have done. He was God's son. He, he knew the Bible. And he was also Jewish, and by the age of 12, they knew the four first books of the Old Testament. So he was, he was smart, and he just, he wasn't just smart because he was a Jew, though. He was smart because he was God's son. And so he, he could have told the Pharisees that they were wrong. He could have, but he didn't. And he showed he love to it, didn't he? Yeah, power under control, and that's the, the beauty of it. So so I'm 6'1", I'm a big dude, I've been a big dude my whole life. Um, my son, he's only 11 years old and he's 5'3". Doctor said he's going to be 6'5", uh, or something. And, and something for you to understand, and, and, and big guys to understand, I remembered that. So I, I play with my friends and they're little and stuff like that, and I had to be careful. Because <laughs> I could hurt them. I remember I was in Scotland in the mission field, and I'm, shake someone's hand, shake my hand. Shake my hand. their knuckles. Yeah. No, and I squeezed their hand so hard I broke a muscle, I broke a bone in their hand. I didn't mean to, 
but I wasn't, pow- I wasn't meek. I wasn't power under control. Yeah. And this idea that Jesus says, I'm going to give a verse and that's it, but I'm going to give you this, this out of Matthew chapter 11. Now we're going to look at the word gentle and humble, but the word meekness can be put in there. And this is what it says from Jesus about how this works, what meekness offers, this understanding your position. And there's a mourning process in it, but watch what it says. This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says, come to me, all those who are weary and heavy burdened, poor in spirit, who are mourning, And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. That's the word meek. Jesus, the first time he describes himself right there, he's meek. I'm gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest in your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is like. The the beautiful thing about this happy attitude is you're going to find rest. I don't have to worry about it. God's got it. Because so often if you just try to work it, you're going to miss it. You've you got to be more religious than the Pharisees and the teachers of law, and they missed it. That's the beauty of what it is. Time's run out. We'll show another one. He'll be doing other stuff tomorrow, so he might not be here. Guys, share and like this. Spend time in. That's Jeremiah. He's my little man, which is like not even little. Do you see this? He's 11. He's going to be a giant. Uh, I hope you have a blessed day. Share, like. We'll see you tomorrow. There's even a cat down there. Have a blessed day. Bye.